All right, guys, we got one here. Um, for one, this is filthy dirty. But I was here a week or so ago and um, the system needed refrigerant. Uh, has a leak somewhere. I offered them options on leak searching and, um, and stuff like that. And uh, he wants to go this route. So we are going to add the one and done leak stop with UV. Uh, we're gonna top off the charge. And if it leaks out again, we will find it um, wherever the UV's at. A lot of people have mixed feelings about this. A lot of people don't like it, uh, this and that, but uh, this is what we're gonna use. We offer it to our customers uh, as an option. Some of them take it, some of them don't. Um, I used to not be a fan of this stuff, but uh, I've been sold over the past couple years. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start this thing up. We are going to uh, add the one and, one and done leak stop, top off the charge. And we're probably gonna have to clean this condenser too, because that looks freaking horrible. Yeah, it's pretty bad. All right, let's get going. Okay, so just unboxing the one and done leak stop. We're going to remove everything. You get an instruction card and you get uh, the actual leak stop solution that's in this bag here. So we wanna read the directions here. Directions for use, important. If system, system moisture levels exceed industry standards, uh, always use NCACD or an industry accepting drying agent 20 minutes before installing the leak seal. Okay, I think we're pretty dry, so we don't have to worry about that. Remove NC one and done from Maylar bag. Turn the ACR system on and verify the unit is running. Connect the NC one and done to the low side service port of the system. This is generally the large line, okay? All right, so let's do that now. All right, this is the device here, and in this clear tube is where our leak stop is. So this end here is gonna go on our suction side. that's good and tight this is a low loss fitting so that's good so you won't have any spray back and get any uh any dye on your hands okay so that was step one now step two ensure the valves on manifold gauge set are closed start by connecting the high side line of manifold gauge to set to the high side service port loosely connect the middle manifold hose to the quarter inch fitting on the NC1 and done, being careful not to depress the Schrader core. Quickly open the high side manifold gauge to purge air out of the yellow hose. Now close the high side manifold valve and quickly tighten the yellow hose fitting to the injector. Okay, so basically what they're telling you to do is hook up the high side, but then hook up your charging hose loosely here. So that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, so what they want you to do is uh, fill your, of course, uh, connect your, your high side hose, but they also want you to have a full column of liquid in your charging hose before you screw it on here. But what I like to do is I like to put a ball valve here. So I've screwed that on there, that's all the way tight. And I am going to hook my charging hose up to this ball valve with this valve off. This helps if you guys have ball valves. Um, you can do it without ball valves, but, um, and just following their directions carefully. But this is the way I like to do it because I keep usually keep a lot of hoses and ball valves on the truck. So, all right, that's all the way tight. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're going to open our high side. That's open. Now this valve is closed here. So now we're gonna open this. Now we have refrigerant up to here. We're gonna bleed this off. Yep, got, got plenty of refrigerant there. Now what we're gonna do 
as soon as we open this up, our high side pressure is going to shoot the refrigerant through this tube, shooting the, the leak stop into the system <clears throat> through the low side. Ready? And it's all pretty much gone now. So we're just gonna work that a couple more times. Just making sure we shoot it in there. You don't wanna dump too much liquid in there. Just gonna open it a couple times. All right, we should be good there. All right, let's, lead, let's read the last part of the directions because I think it covers actually what I just did. Next, rapidly open and close the high side valve on the manifold gauge, allowing a small amount of liquid to flow through the yellow hose and NC1 and done two. With high side valve on the manifold gauge set closed, wait one minute for the yellow hose and NC1 and done to equalize to suction pressure. Disconnect NC1 and done from suction service port and from manifold gauge set. Allow unit to run for at least one hour to ensure proper uh, product has circulated in the system recycle empty container okay so we're basically done uh, it's it's that easy all of our leak sealant is in the system now we're just going to hit it a couple more times all right now we are safe to remove this here because like I said this is a low loss fitting here actually we're gonna we're gonna remove this here gonna close this remove lose very little refrigerant and then we're going to remove this and we're good so it's as easy as that now we're gonna hook our our suction uh, side hose back up we're gonna hook our refrigerant up and we're gonna top the charge off all right we haven't added anything yet uh, you can see that suction pressure is pretty low suction line temperature is pretty low so let me make sure I think I have my my probe backwards here yep I do <laughs> okay all right let's put that one there Put this guy here. All right, let's let that stabilize back. All right, we're pretty well stabilized here. Uh, pretty low, so we're gonna go ahead and um, and add refrigerant about a pound, pound and a half at a time. All right, we've got about three pounds. We've got three pounds in it now. Let that stabilize a little bit. Really like to get that suction pressure up some, but our system is definitely running a lot better now. So let's let it run for a few more minutes and we'll see if uh, our system will stabilize a little better. All right, our suction line temperature is really cold, which is in turn giving us no superheat. got 14 degrees of sub cooling which is good and I can't even get in the house here because the guy's not home to see what that air handler is doing I'm gonna have to probably either ask the guy to come home or come back at a later time just to check that air handler out because that that's pretty cold of course there's probably no load in the house i mean i think it's maybe 62 degrees out here i put a total of four pounds in <clears throat> so we got to let the system run for at least an hour and it's been running for maybe about 20 minutes with the uh the leak stop in it so we'll let it run for a little while longer and then we're gonna have to shut it down so I can uh, I can clean this coil. All right, we've been running for about 45 minutes now, and uh, this is what our pressures are. I think I have something going on with a blower or something upstairs or a TXB. I just can't get up there to see it, so that sucks. 
always sucks when the homeowner's not here and you don't have access to the house. So I'm probably going to end up having to come back or something like that, but to check the blower. We are, we do at least have some superheat. Uh, the subcooling's fine. I'm okay with that subcooling. Um, but that suction pressure is pretty low. Uh, unless we got like a, a 55 degree room up there. Um, you know, this is a little bit too low. But, all right, I'm going to let it run for a few more minutes. And then I'm going to shut it down to clean the coil. All right, guys, there you have it. Put the leak sealing in, the stop leak, one and done. Topped off the charge. It took four pounds. And we got out of there. I also cleaned the coil, too. I didn't show that, but I did clean the coil. Um, I'm going to have to go back because I didn't like how low that suction pressure was and how cold that suction line was. So unless it was like really cold in the house, which is possible because it was only like lower 60s out today. Uh, unless it was really cold in there, I don't see my suction pressure being that low. So I'm going to have to go back, see if I got to adjust the TXV or maybe I have a dirty coil or clog filter fan speed too low it could literally be anything so i'm going to schedule a follow-up to, to go over that air handler uh thoroughly and see uh see what it's what it's doing so let me know what you guys think about any kind of leak sealant the stop leak stuff like that i didn't use them for years and over the past year or two i have started using them and have had pretty good success with them so i know a lot of people have mixed feelings some people won't use them at all some people swear by them we like to give our customer options. We'll give them an option of just a gas and go, a gas and go with leak sealant, or we can do a full leak search if you want, which is very labor intensive. And um, sometimes we have to pump the system down or recover the, re the refrigerant altogether and add nitrogen, and that can get very time consuming. So usually whenever I have a leak, I do a preliminary leak search with an electronic leak detector and soap bubbles. If I can't find it with that, that's when I start giving the customer options on leak sealants and um, and leak searches. So let me know what you guys do. Uh, but that's going to be it for this one, guys. So um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything, and it really helps me and the channel out a lot. So all right, guys, I'm off to the next one.